This is why central bank divergence is an ultimate game changer when it comes to trading, especially when you're trading Forex. So even if you're not trading Forex, let's say you're looking to trade metals, you're looking to trade silver against the dollar, right? If you have an understanding of what the Fed is going to do or what the Fed is likely to do, then that increases the chances of your trade working exponentially, right? So in this video, I'm just going to look at central bank divergence. Obviously, we won't be looking at this gold trade that I have in front of you. And if you want to do a deep dive on it, you can just check out a video. I think I titled the video Unlocking the Secrets to Trend Trading, where I explained what we expect about the Fed in terms of their interest rates, since we're expecting them to cut interest rates next week on the 18th of September, right? So you can just click the pop up right here on top and you'll be able to watch that video, right? So why are central banks so important, right? So here's how I need you to think about central banks. Firstly, let's take the economy. Think of the economy like a very big and huge ship, right? And then think of the central banks as the captain of the ship. So the captain's announcements, which is the central bank statements, they tell you about the ship's direction and the upcoming weather. So if you listen closely and attentively, or you read attentively, these announcements or these statements you can anticipate changes and then you are able to make informed decisions. And making informed decision ensures that you have a smoother journey even though storms may come. So this in essence highlights the central bank's role in guiding the economy and the importance of you as a trader staying informed every single time about what the central bank is looking at, planning on doing, or even what they are thinking about, right, to be exact. So that is in essence the significance of central banks. So if you look at them from that lens of the fact that they are the, cap they, they are the captain of the ship, which is the ship being the economy, so they are the captain of the economy, then you are able to make better and informed decisions if you have an idea of what their goals and objectives are, right? So we are not obviously going to be looking at this trade right here, which is silver, like I said, there's a clear trade where there is a beautiful trade divergence uh, that we've that we are currently seeing unfolding, right? So this trade is actually AUD CAD, right? So this is the AUD CAD trade. Let's go to this time frame here that we currently have. Uh, so I'm currently in a buy position on uh, this AUD CAD trade, and I executed this trade uh, well essentially today. Uh, and obviously you can clearly see that's currently moving in profits, right? But that's not the whole point because you you know if you, if you know one thing about me, if you've watched my videos long enough, you know that I love to drop some value, right? So I'm not here to show you my trade that is in profits, but I'm here to show you how I came to the conclusion of actually executing these trades. And that is where central bank divergence actually fits in. Also, if you have no clue what central bank or what divergence actually means, divergence means moving in opposite directions from a common point so in this case the common point is the central bank so we're looking at central bank of economy a against central bank of economy b and then we are trying to find a divergence in their direction or in their in their in their objectives or in their path that they're looking to take as a central bank so in this example here we are looking at the australian dollar which the central bank is the reserve bank of australia against the canadian dollar which the central bank is the bank of canada right so let us firstly understand just a brief uh, i'm just gonna give you guys a brief summary obviously i'm not going to go into all the figures and all the details so if we're looking at the bank of canada right the, the BOC, like I said, so they have been cutting interest rates since June. They've currently cut their interest rates three times and their unemployment rate keeps on going higher. Their economy is slowing down and their preferred measure of underlying inflation is also falling and it's moving closer towards their inflation target, right? So all of these things that I've just summarized quickly are actually an ideal situation for continued interest rate cuts from the Bank of Canada and therefore building a very strong case for the Canadian dollar to provide us with good selling opportunities, right? So I'm, I just summarized what, this, what the Bank of Canada has been doing and what they're looking at and what the measures that they're looking at are currently doing, right? That is with the Bank of Canada, right? So we're looking for selling opportunities. Now, 
if the Bank of Canada or the Canadian dollar we're looking to short because of what the Bank of Canada is looking at and how the economy is developing, then now we can look at the Reserve Bank of Australia and see if whether the economy is developing in the opposite direction or not in the same direction. It might not be extremely in the opposite direction, but also not in the exact same direction with the Bank of Canada. Because remember what I said, divergence is moving in opposite directions from a common point, right? So now, if we then move on to the Australian dollar, so the Reserve Bank of Australia, they are currently not cutting interest rates because they are struggling to get inflation closer to their target, right? They expect inflation to fall towards their target in 2025. So late 2025, that is when they actually expect inflation to fall towards their target. And they also see their interest rates remaining at, at the current high rate of 4.35% until early 2025, which means they do not see the possibility of interest rate cuts in 2024. So just based on interest rate cuts and the Bank of Canada, they've, they've already cut interest rates three times. Economy is slowing. It's supportive of continued interest rate cuts. On the other hand, we have the Reserve Bank of Australia. They are not currently, based on how the economy is developing, they are not seeing themselves cutting interest rates in 2024, right? So what does that create now? It creates a divergence if we're looking at interest rates, right? Then let me let me continue giving you guys just a summary on the Reserve Bank of Australia, right? So also another very important thing to remember is that the, the Australian economy is currently slowing because of what is happening with China. China is experiencing a very slow recovery. Iron ore prices or the steel, steel market in China is having issues as well. So that's negatively impacting the, the, the buying of iron ore. And Australia is the biggest exporter of iron ore to China, right? So obviously that's going to negatively impact Australia. So the Australian economy is showing signs of slowing down. Um, but the wage price index is currently above the Reserve Bank of Australia's forecast of 4%. It's currently sitting at 4.1. It, it, it came out at 4. Point, it came in at 4.1% in the second quarter, right? And we also saw the first I increase in CPI, which is inflation, since the second since the fourth quarter of 2022, right? So inflation went from 3.6 to 3.8 in the second quarter and they, they that is where they actually had projected inflation would be in the what in the first quarter in the first half of 2024 right so inflation is still relatively high because their target okay the central bank's target is essentially two to three percent their midpoint is 2.5 percent that is the inflation target for the reserve bank of australia and remember what i said they expect that inflation will fall within their target which is between two to three percent in late 2025 and they see it falling to the midpoint of 2.5% in 2026. So that's a long time away, right? Obviously, it might not play out in that way, but based on the data that we have right now, that is the conclusion that we that the Reserve Bank of Australia comes to, and that is what we also come to as a conclusion, right? Then lastly, uh, then lastly, the unemployment rate is also rising. Uh, but their concern, or, or by their concern, I mean the Reserve Bank of Australia's concern over the slowing pace of disinflation, which means the slowing pace of inflation going lower, makes the Australian dollar a good buying opportunity as the Reserve Bank of Australia maintains a hawkish tone. By hawkish, I mean bullish tone, essentially, right? So now you can clearly see that by just me giving you a summary of those two statements, oh, sorry, of those, uh, a summary of those two central banks, we have a clear divergence. One is cutting interest rates and it's headed on a path of continued interest rate cuts. The other one is not really headed on a path of interest rate cuts and they are actually struggling with inflation. Inflation is still remains high, even though for both economies, unemployment is pushing higher. The economy is showing signs of weakness, but we're seeing more signs of weakness in the economy for the, for the Canadian economy compared to the Australian economy, right? So that creates now what we call a divergence. And this is why I say, central bank divergence is a what is a game changer and by you understanding the divergence between these two central banks you can now look to trade the stronger currency which is australia against the weaker one which is the canadian dollar right so weaker one the stronger one in the end in the near term and the weaker one in the near term right so now you can look to buy a udcad so you already have a direction when it comes to actually looking for 
buying opportunities on AUD CAD. So now all you have to do when you get onto your price chart, you can then look for what? You can then look for levels to buy at, whether you look for support and resistance. And this is what I always say, guys, that if you've been trading for more than one or over 12 months and you are not profitable yet, you do not need a new technical analysis strategy, right? Because as I'm going to show you right now, I'm going to switch over to a line chart, right? And I can just use basic support and resistance. Let's say I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pick this level here. Just going to say this is a resistance level. Sorry, this was a support level previously or i can just say this level right here was a broken was a was a resistance before it now it can act as support right and now i'm gonna use this level right here a flip zone as you may call it right and then i'm just gonna wait for price to get there and look to buy what is most important is that you have a direction based on fundamental or a fundamentally backed direction that is the key thing because i'm just showing you based on basic support and resistance uh, what other strategy can I probably or technical analysis strategy can I probably show you here, right? So this is one of the methods you could have used to enter or I'm sure I'm sure let's go down to a lower time frame I'm sure maybe if we go down to let's go to a uh, six hour time frame I'm sure probably we can work with some um, with some um, trend line right trend line break uh, Maybe where would you have you could have probably put your trend line here and say this is a trend line break and then obviously you would have bought after we have a breakout here right after price breaks out or if probably if we go down to the one hour we can or we can also have an inner trend line but no not really but you could have used this as what as your entry as your entry criteria and say okay if you break out here then i look to buy right once you've broken out of this with a, a strong momentum breakout right strong momentum breakout means a very strong bullish candle that closes around the high right that is essentially what i mean if you were using a trend line breakout strategy right so you can clearly see that i'm showing you ver various entry methods based on technical analysis that we can use or that we could have used but everything still remains the same or you could have just said quickly to the weekly chart and be like okay Right here on the weekly chart, I can see that we had somewhat, we had a bounce here and price started pushing higher. So this shows that this is some form of support. And then you could have just used this level and said this is support. Or you could have looked left here and said this was support level here. And then I'm just going to use that as well. Right. So, okay, I'm not going to add another horizontal line. So I'm just going to switch to a candlestick chart. Sorry, to a line chart. Then this is what I'm going to do. Right. So this is a support level, an area of support level, as you can see, we had rejection before. So you can use whatever technical analysis strategy to try and justify why you are entering here. But if you have a clean divergence, especially if you have a clean central bank divergence, then it will make your, you, it will give you greater confidence to stick with the, with the position or with the direction that you are looking to trade in right so you could have used that you could have used the three hour time frame sorry three day time frame two day time frame doesn't really matter that much guys but what i'm trying to show you here is the power behind central bank divergence right so um, i was able to execute this trade based on central bank divergence so don't necessarily try and figure out my entry strategy and so on and so forth doesn't really matter in the bigger scheme of things but if you have your fundamentals your fundamentals laid down and you understand properly what is happening then it increases the chances of you experiencing profitable trades and this is essentially how i come to the conclusion of whether i'm looking to buy a currency pair or most asset classes in assets right like i showed you with silver i mean buy positions of so in silver obviously because we're anticipating that the fed is going to cut interest rates if they cut then that is going to potentially weaken the dollar or make the dollar less attractive in terms of investment, right? So in that case, we experience weakness of the dollar. And that means that silver should push higher, right? That is based on fundamentals. Then entry-wise, you can use any technical analysis strategy, right? So, but in essence, what I wanted to show you guys, like I said, it was just the central bank divergence. And I hope you found value from this video. And as always, if you did, if you, if you found any value from this video, Give it a thumbs up, like the video, share the video with someone who might benefit from it. Yeah, guys, share the video, right? It's not going to hurt anyone if you share the video. And if you have not yet subscribed, do subscribe. And if you want to learn more, 
just join my free telegram group click the first link down in the description and it will take you directly to the telegram group and if you want something that's more like coaching then you can click the second link which will take you to the fundamental analysis mastery challenge uh, that we have coming up on the 16th of september right but in essence i just wanted to share value with you on this video with regards to central banks so moving forward focus on the central banks understand what they are saying because remember what i said the, sh the the economy is the ship and the central bank is the captain that steers the ship so the central bank will steer the economy right so it's very important that you understand what central banks are doing right so if you found value like i said from this video like the video and i'm gonna see you guys in the next video